Hello. How's everybody doing? We good? So uh, who here likes uh, Codename uh, Kids Next Door? I, I don't think you all like it that much. You guys aren't feeling it. That, like, I've got them backstage. I was going to bring them out, but like that energy was weak sauce. So like, I'm going to try that one more time. Who here likes Codename Kids Next Door? <laughs> much better, much better. Say what? That, yes, that's what I said. That, uh, you don't have to. Okay, don't just yell out random stuff. That's okay. There, no, there will be no audience Tourette's today. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. I actually have two, uh, three fifths of the code of the, the kids next door back there. Uh, it, 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 but you're probably wondering because there's only uh, three uh, microphones up here. Uh, so yes, three fifths of the code named kids next door. So, uh, without further ado, let's, uh, start bringing them out. What do you say? Yeah. All right. So the first person I'm bringing out, uh, uh, was, uh, number one and number two, Nigel and Hoagie, uh, put your hands together for Mr. Ben Deskin. And of course she was number five as well as everybody in number five's family and one of the delightful children from down the lane and just any time you just need a random black person. Uh, He's not wrong. In animation, it's, it's, it's usually her. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Miss Cree Summer. Yeah! Woo! There yeah. she is. Number fives. Uh, they're number fives in the house. Number yeah. five makes noise. Hey, there they are. Oh, they found hey. each other. Yeah. Hey, number five. Yeah. What's happening? Hey, hey, guys. How's it going? How's your con how's been so far? How's everybody doing? Yeah. At the bitter end. Yes. The bitter end. You made end. it to Sunday and you're still Everybody's alive. Everybody's just hanging on. <laughs> Everybody's Aspirin barely hanging on. and shit. Right. Yeah. <laughs> They've been wearing the same costumes all weekend, yeah. so they're starting to draw flies. <laughs> and we love you, though. Charm. Yeah. It's Charmed, lovely. I'm it's sure. lovely. It's yeah. lovely. Um, well, I'm going to start off by asking. Uh, uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> My first question is for uh, is for Ben. Okay. Oh, uh, oh, no. Ben, you uh, on the show, you play two totally different characters with two totally different vocal qualities. Um, my question specifically is for number two. Uh, number two was, uh, you know, a, a husky child, but mm -hmm. you did not give him a, a fat kid voice. You know what I mean? Was what exactly? No. Like Eric Cartman. Yeah. You know exactly yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. But, and was that done deliberately uh, by you, or was that a, a choice that the, the directors made? Or uh, Yeah, no, that was my idea. Um, uh, when I saw him, I thought, like, oh, he's a nerd. I'm going to give him more of, a, like, a nasally quality. Uh -huh. And so in the original pilot, he sounded kind of like this. This right. is the way he was. But as we did the show, it was sort of like that didn't really work so well, and he became more high energy. So the voice started coming up here, and it wound up being right around in this area, and he just stayed there instead. I don't remember. Yeah. I don't remember the, I don't remember the first incarnation. Well, that's because... That. I have no short term. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Mm, all right. uh, <laughs> um, so, w 
The show Codename Kids Next Door actually uh, is uh, had the distinction of very few cartoons in that it, they the show actually ended. They gave the show a finale. Yeah. Um, first of all, when I got a chance to to check out the finale, it was it was absolutely amazing. Um, Describe to me when you guys found out that the show was ending. Well, how did how did that feel to you guys after? Well, the show ran for about four years. My so throat started like crying tears of relief. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, because we had nicknamed the show code name Blood Throat. Yeah. Because mm. uh, Mr. Warburton, our fearless leader and creator, really had one direction, and it was Bigger. just. Bigger, louder, bigger, 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 louder, bigger, louder. You guys remember the Staples like commercial with like the easy button? Yeah. Yeah, we were gonna get him like a bigger button that yeah. he could just hit. So you just keep bigger, pressing bigger, it. Bigger, so bigger. by the end, we were just screaming through Kids Next Door, and so when they said it was ending, I think, yeah, it was really sad. Yeah. It was also just what a nice relief for the old vocal cords <laughs> to not have to scream every day. Yeah. No, but in truth, you know, it was such a sweet little tender kind of little rascals, kind of yeah. I don't know. I just always love the idea of kids versus grown-ups. Mm -hmm. And so it was a sad day to have it come to an end, of course. Yeah. This Shut was up. Like they don't know what's happening. Big... Shut up. They didn't see it. Shut uh. up. They didn't see it. This was like my first like big cartoon. So for me, it was like, oh, man, I'm never going to do anything ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sad. But like, no, it was... But this show is so cool, man. It is cool, and I just can't believe how long it's prevailed. I mean, I yeah. just can't believe how long you guys are hanging on and how much love it gets and just how, you know, it just keeps being introduced to the next generation, the next generation. I have two small, lovely ladies, my savages, brave and hero, my daughters, and they love Kids Next Door. Of course not number five. Oh. I know, they love number three. Oh, well, who, yeah. Yeah, what you going to do? Yeah. What you going to do? Everybody loves number three and oh, his, his horrible spelling. Yeah. <laughs> it's no. gone. G no, no, sorry, no. I'm number four. I'm sorry. G-A-W-N. We need a new moderator. Gone. I'm sorry. No. I'm fired. I'm fired. I'm sorry. <laughs> Quit it. You're not up here. I'm up here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, d here's what I'd like for everybody to do. Uh, if you guys have got questions, we've got microphones on both sides. So everybody started kind of lining up now to start getting ready uh -huh. for those questions. Okay. We're going to kick it to you guys in just a I have a to take a picture in between, like, you know, between two ferns, between two fives. Yes, between, yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> five, you, and they did. You were saying backstage, like, I wonder if they're going to sit together. They, five, and they Both are of your number together. fives so absolutely cute. sat together. So cute. Um, Ben, when the, uh, you first approached the project, were you always going to be cast as as both characters, or? Uh, oh no, um, no. When we when we first started doing this, um, uh, Tom Warburton, the creator, wanted uh, Sue Rose, who played. I don't know if you guys remember this show, Angela Anaconda. Mm -hmm. Woo! Okay, the girl who. You don't have to boo. Jeez. Right. Anyway, no. Yeah. There was a, the girl who played the lady who played Angela Anaconda. Her name is Sue Rose, and he wanted her uh, to play number two, and that's who we had in mind. And um, uh, Colette said, "Listen, um, why don't you put the the role up for audition just in case?" And he went, "All right." And so I tried out for it, and he went, "Oh no, I gotta tell Sue. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna hire this guy instead." <laughs> so then it was like, "That was great. I got number two, and um, we we recorded the the pilot." So originally they had a uh, a young actual British boy playing number one, uh, and it sounded great, um, but then they needed him to do pickups, and he'd gone to summer camp. And when he came back from summer camp, his voice had changed, ah, and yes. so now, he sounded like it a dropped. man. Yeah. So, yeah, and it did not, didn't work, so they were just like, well, we'll have Ben try, and they were like, yeah, that's good, and so I wound up playing both characters, and then it got picked up, and that's how that happened. So, you, you said earlier that the two of you were, were relieved about the, the show no, ending. No, well, being well I, I'm, I'm exaggerating, joking. of course, yeah. yes, yes, yes. So, if, if given the chance, would you guys would have continued on, with, you guys would have gladly continued on with the series? Of course. Yeah, yeah naturally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who came up with all of the? Is, I'm guessing that's uh, uh, the the creator who came up with all of those amazing acronyms for every episode and all oh, of the wasn't operations. That cool? yeah. Yes, he had acronyms yeah, that was Mr. for Warburton, of days. Course. Acronyms yeah. for days. Yeah. Um, uh, cre uh, what is what is, what is it like essentially being every black person in uh, cartoons ever? <laughs> <laughs> it's fabulous, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All power to all my people. <laughs> no, all the people are you. Yes, yes. <laughs> One woman revolution. Even some of the men. <laughs> um, when uh, you were approached to uh, play the part of number five, uh, was there uh, anything that uh, you wanted to, to do specifically to put the, the Cree Summer sort of stamp on you know, the character? This was one of those rare occasions, you know, but I've been doing voiceovers for a long time. 
uh, I'm an old broad now, but I started when I was, God, I think I was 10 years old was when I did Penny from Dun Inspector Dun Gadget. Dun and uh, so I, every now and then, out of the kindness of a director's heart, I'll just get offered a part. And Kids Next Door was one of those shows I did not have to audition for. I got a phone call asking if I would come be a part of the cast. And uh, as soon as I saw her, they just said she was super duper laid back. And I thought, okay. And I just loved that hat, obviously. Yeah coming down in that long braid. So obviously I had an affinity for it. And I had just recently been watching something with, about Scatman Crothers. <laughs> and I remember thinking like, God, I wish I'd get to do that voice somewhere. Where w would I ever get to do that voice? And as soon as I saw Abigail, I was like, what if I just talk like this? <laughs> <laughs> and Colette and Tom Warburton were like, that's her. And then I do remember there was just like a, you know, just a hot minute where they were like, I is that weird if a little girl sounds like that? But everybody was laughing, so they said, let's just go with it. Let's just go with it. <laughs> and so that's how she was born. Little bit of me and Scat Man Crothers. <laughs> that's awesome. Abigail got into her uh, older sibling special brownies, didn't yeah, she? Yeah, well, well <laughs> if she was lucky, child. <laughs> but don't forget, her older sibling was Cree, and that yes. was... Uh, <laughs> Yes, she was awful, wasn't she? The yes. sinister Cree. And I remember when Tom approached me and asked if he could create this really bad character, this bad older sister, this mean older sister named Cree. And I was just delighted. I thought, how fun. I'd never been animated before. Well, I guess I'd been animated as Kita, but I had never been animated as Cree. And I just thought it was pretty rad to battle myself all the time. Good old schizophrenia coming in use once I was, again. I was, I was, right, I was just about to ask, uh, actually, both of you, are, were you able to kind of go back and forth and switch between the characters, or were, did you have to do everything for, for no. Abigail and, and Ben? Did you have to do everything for Nigel and then come back and do we everything? We do that for, all the time. Oh, really? Yeah, no, we, we, yeah, we would go back and forth. Like, yeah, if it was Cree talking to five... Back, just back do it more. yourself. Oh, yeah. yeah. Same yeah. with Ben, if it was, you know, one talking to two. Yeah. That's just what we do all the time, because don't forget, we also played... The two of us also played lots of incidental characters. Right, so right, right, you're right. not just talking between your two main characters. Also you're talking between a bunch of other... And yeah. the delightful kids next door. Yeah. yeah. Delightful Our delightful children. kids from Children from Down the Lane. Yeah. Sorry. Chell, I'll get it right. <laughs> it's, uh, oh, oh she hard. gets it wrong and you don't say anything. I get one number wrong. And <laughs> you all ready to freaking crucify me. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah, how about it? Let's take a few questions from the audience. Uh, we're going to start here on the right. Hi. Hi. Hello. I just How you want doing? to say it's so great to me both of you. Kids Next Door was one of my first cartoons I watched all the way through. I loved Aww. it from beginning to end. Thank you. You both were amazing. Thank you. So I have a question. You both, both of you have played a wide range of characters and wide range of ages. Is it different between playing kid characters and playing adult characters or is, it, wow. is there a similarity between the two? Hmm. Well, I'll tell you one thing I'm learning, being somebody's mama now, uh, <laughs> is that there's one thing you just can't fake, and it's innocence, man. You know, we try as grown-ups to make ourselves sound little and cute and sweet, and we do the best we can, but there's a tonality and a resonance that is innocence. And you just, after a while, you just can't fake it. You know, like I'll be watching a cartoon and I know it's real kids doing it. Mm. And it's like, man, I could never have done that. I've just seen too many hard times. <laughs> I mean, that, and that's the truth. You know, they, they, it's just a certain sound that you get. So I think the, the older you get and the more stuff you see, I think the harder it is to play a kid, man. Yeah. And, and play it authentically. Because kids just have that magic and that sweetness that you just can't fake it, baby. And I got the convenient excuse of my voice changed. So yeah, I, I can't. his balls never dropped. No, yeah. no, they did. They did. Oh, they did. They did. oh Ben. Oh, oh thank God. Finally. He just did. Yeah, Finally. There we, there we and go. And you were the witness. And now Ben is a man. Yeah. Ladies. Thank you. Both. I had thank a quick you. question. Ben, are, uh, are you in any way handy at all? Like, is, handy? Yeah, as far as like... In, are you, you talking about getting backstage to a rock Oh, answer? boy. There we go. Sorry. hey -o. Hold on <laughs> No, just as far as is like inventing things. Stuff? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh no. 
<laughs> no. Like but I, weren't those things no. cool? They yeah. Cool. Contraptions. Yeah. So if I gave you like a two by four, like it'd just be a two by it four. It would be a two by four. <laughs> I could maybe like hammer a nail through it, get tetanus, and then go to the get hospital. Tetanus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next get question. Tetanus. <laughs> That's how All right. Um, favorite episode and favorite villain? Oh, Both for me, you. support. Um, the one where uh, they discover the battle ready armor. That's, oh, that's my yes. favorite too. Yes. Get out! The bra episode is my favorite yes. too because Free was the one yes. who just had, who had that bra. Uh-huh. Yeah. That was hilarious. Someday soon, the kids next door will be wet, ready, wearing bras of their own. And then Nigel had on a bra. Oh, that was such a good episode. That you know, is the the little one. sugar panties, Nigel. Yes, <laughs> sweet little Nigel. Yeah. Favorite villain as well? Oh, uh, uh, Toilinator. Toilinator. <laughs> Come on. I swear I would pay money if yeah. D. Bradley Baker would cosplay as Toilinator. <laughs> I, I know he could pull it off. Oh. I mean, that's another thing. Kids Next Door just had so many great guest stars mm-hmm. on the show. We really scored so many amazing voice talents, and D. Oh, yeah. definitely killed it as Toilinator. Uh, did, when you guys recorded, did you guys do ISO, or were you all in the... No, we got to be together a lot. Yeah. Oh, wow. Ensemble. Okay, cool. It was an ensemble. Next question. Um, hi. hi. I have a question for Ben, actually. Okay. To my knowledge, you voiced uh, Kaneo Takerada from Kill a Kill. What was that like? We covered that yesterday. <laughs> well, I wasn't here I'm, yesterday. I'm just messing How with you. I'm just messing with you, buddy. Messing. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, that was really cool uh, in the sense that nobody's kicked my butt for it yet. Because uh, <laughs> like, I think the original character was Osakan. And so the, 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 the change went from like being... You know, an Osaka bean, so that's uh, kind of like all about the money to an American pimp. And so, yeah. <laughs> it was, so it was me basically doing like really offensive stuff, but nobody's gotten mad at me for it yet. Thank and you. I'm yeah. glad. Yeah. It's because it's a cartoon. They don't know. Yeah, they don't yeah. know. Yeah. Man, you don't know nothing about Takarata, son. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. And I actually had a question for Cree, too. Um, whenever you do your voices, do you ever feel like, you know, when you're voicing a character, do you ever feel like, you know, I feel like I sound exactly like, like this other character. Like if you're voicing Foxy Love, do you think your voice, you feel like, you know, you know, I sound like Abigail Lincoln at times too. Uh, maybe a little bit. It's, if I do, it's by accident. That means I just maybe didn't have it very tight that day. I mean, because uh, the Foxy is, is sexy and Abigail is down here. So, <laughs> so God forbid that they sound the same. <laughs> Yikes. Maybe uh, Abigail grew up yeah. to be the Sounded fox. Completely different. Completely fox different. Thank you, though. Throat, you know. yeah. Hello. Hi. So, um, I, last year, I rewatched the entire series of Codename Kids Next Door, not yeah. that long after the um, Galactic Kids Next Door video. Mm-hmm. And the show, I have to say, is so much better than I remembered. I watched it growing uh. up, and at the time, I think I was more into the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy. But but th- though the crossover episode was amazing, I'm glad that happened. Um, <laughs> though I rewatched the whole series, I realized it was so much better than I remember. It was doing a lot of things that wouldn't become common in Western animation for uh, all ages cartoons until about a decade later. Um, they were you were doing major story arcs and character development and uh, episodes where the ba- where the good guys wouldn't always win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this was stuff that I wouldn't see. Um, you know, that wouldn't become commonplace until, you know, more than a, like a decade later with like Adventure Time and Steven Universe and Gravity Falls. Um, and the, the Kids Next Door was just so ahead of its time. So um, I just really wanted to say that. But my actual question is, um, what is the status now of Galactic Kids Next Door? Oh, because gee. I really <laughs> want that to happen. You have no idea how much I want that to happen, it's especially now, break her heart now. Yeah. now feeling like Do Kids it. Next Door. It's not going to. It's not. I hate to break your heart. It's not? No. no. Like, no. this Cartoon Network just has no interest in it? They have no interest have in no it. They have no interest uh, in it. Tom tried. He oh, really did. Not, not for not trying. I mean, God bless. But listen, you know what? They got oh. Powerpuff Girls rebooted. Yeah. And uh, I, I think there's something else, like... Samurai Jack is Samurai coming Jack. back. So, That's yeah. right. So yeah. you know what? Listen, if you really want it bad enough, start petitioning. Start Make some noise. For it. Make some yeah. noise. Yeah. That's like, I saw that and I'm like, I had real hopes for Galactic yeah. Kids Next yeah. Door because I of that. I think we so all did. I really, really yeah. would like it to happen, just c- especially because now, like I said, I feel like it would fit in so well with yeah. the cartoons today. Well, he I tried. Like he Kids tried. Next Door was just like kind of a precursor to all of that. It was doing those, those really 
you know, sophisticated things with its storytelling uh, so much longer before other Western animated cartoons dared to. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, we um, appreciate your fandom. Though. Yeah, we and your great love. observations no as well. Problem. Thank you. No Thank problem. No problem. It's a, it's, a, it's a great series. Thank you. Really, really much, ever, much better than you remember. If you guys haven't seen it since you were kids, go back and rewatch it. Really do. Go back. Thank All right. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you. So much. Have a great day. She took my first question. Uh oh. oh. Uh, my second question was, at the beginning of the show, um, uh, it, had, it had more of a tone of kids just kind of, uh, of a bunch of kids in a treehouse kind of fighting adults with rudimentary, uh, with, with rudimentary Rud weapons. Rudimentary. And then as it went on, it had more of a, uh, more of a, I guess, super spy group against super villains uh, uh -huh. vibe to it. When was, the, when was the moment that they decided to go that way instead of how it originally yeah, I don't was? Know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best answer. I yeah. had the yeah. most honest answer. I was going to BS something. Oh, you were? Go ahead. Yeah. Loop it out. Go ahead. Try it. It was yeah. episode 13. No. Yeah. Um, uh, well, you know, I feel like it was actually always uh, Tom's goal to I expand it because the um, the idea was originally originally these characters were. Do you guys remember a short called Kenny and the Chimp? By yes. Any chance? Okay, there so Tom wanted to make that series. Uh, that didn't work out, and originally the kids next door were going to be bad guys for Kenny and the Chimp. They were literally the annoying kids next door. Yeah. And so then it turned into this like sci-fi thing, uh, or, a, or some more like a spy, kids having their own spy versus fi. adventure. Yeah. yeah. And um, spy-fi, I like that. Isn't that good? That's cool. And uh, yeah, so I think I think that was his plan all along. I don't think it necessarily switched midstream. I think it was it was. I think that was his that. natural progression as yeah. a writer. Yeah. Thank you. That was good BS, right? Good BS. Really good. <laughs> Nailed it. They bought it. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. Hi. Okay, this is just out of curiosity, but for your vocal cords, what was the hardest effect while, while doing kids that, go, that you had on your vocal cords from doing said scene? Oh, just screaming, man. It was just mm. unending screams. Yeah. And even if it wasn't a scream, Somehow the line got turned into a yeah. screen. Like, like, oh, like, it would just be like, instead of like, how's it going? It wasn't just like, how's it going? Yeah. It wasn't that, it was just like, how's it going? Yeah. What's up? You know, and it was everything. like, I'm good, Nigel, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you were like, really? That's how you want it? Okay. okay. There yeah. was an episode when we were fighting, though, yeah. so that, that would have made sense. For it would have made sense. <laughs> right. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love the relationship between Nigel and Number Five. Yeah. I mean, it, there was just so many, the, the, so many. Thank God, when we weren't screaming, there were some really tender, sweet moments. Very much because the, the friendships, very yeah, much the so. friendships were so real. Mm -hmm. Hey, watch hold it. on, hold you, on. What you doing, she, girl? She, she, shipped, uh, yeah, she yeah. said she shipped them. Okay. Okay. Don't. Yes. <laughs> But yes, Don't you're... take away my woman. Right. <laughs> uh, one last question. Yes. yes. What's your favorite scene overall in Kids Next Door? I th oh, mine is when I was talking to Nigel about him leaving Kids Next Door. Oh, God, yeah. That, I, it's my favorite, yeah. though, because what? it's like, you know, it's, don't feel that bad. You know, there was just something so sweet about it. It actually pulled at my heartstrings. I mean, that's my favorite, is Abigail and Nigel saying goodbye. Mm. Well, that's a good one. Yeah. Wow. I'm not going to top that one at all. <laughs> um, Thank uh, you. You're welcome. She's like, good. Oh, right, right, good, right, right, then good. don't. Bye, chow me. Right. Chow me. Sure. Right. <laughs> Hi. 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 Yeah, get out. Um, first of all, God bless y'all for existing and working uh -huh. for K&D, because... Our especially pleasure. Summer, your character has been an inspiration to me, especially Aww. with my race. Yeah. Like, I never thought, like, yeah. I was so inspired. Aww. But um, my question is, it's kind of similar to people when it comes to favors, but what is your favorite line? Like, that line that you remember, still remember in your oh, head. God. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that seems kind of tough In now. my head, I don't know. a decade know. ago. You're, 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 wow, that's a tough one. Can we google it, as my mother would say? <laughs> um, I don't know. Well, I don't know what my favorite line is. Uh, gosh. Oh, jeez. Maybe, is you crazy? Is you crazy that, was funny. Yeah, is you crazy? I think I mean, that. <laughs> you're right. Actually. I think, is you crazy? Because you know, it was never you written. crazy? It never written as that. It was never written was, are as you that. crazy? I mean, Abigail was much more articulate, and I definitely messed her up a lot. I mean, just 
because it was funny. I mean, and they gave me allowances <laughs> and let me say things the way I wanted it to. But I would say that's probably, thank you, Ben. Good save. <laughs> probably that was my favorite thing that Abigail would say. Chow, I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I want to back up for just a second. Uh, you guys said you did a lot of screaming. On a, uh, on a scale of, uh, of none to like your average anime, how much screaming were you guys doing as far as... 482. Like Jeez. <laughs> wow. That's about right. Yeah, I mean, there are times I, I've done a lot of anime since doing Kids Next Door, and a lot of times they're like, "Oh, do you need some water? Are you gonna be okay?" He didn't gonna, ask you that you know, at Kids Next Door. No, I'm like, <laughs> I did Kids Next Door, man. Like, I can scream for hours. I'll be fine. Yeah. Like, yeah. Even guest stars would be like, "Oh no, I've got to do Kids Next Door." <laughs> oh no. They used to call Blood Tom Warburton the Nodinator. The Nodinator. Yeah. Yeah. Vocal like, nodes. That's like swelling of the vocal cords. Yeah. Yeah. So, easy gig. <laughs> Wait, real quick, Ben, do you yes. know your favorite line? My favorite line? Yeah. Um, uh, mm. Help me. Now yeah, just probably kids next door battle yeah, stations. Battle stations. Yeah. Yes! Yeah. Oh, Which I would do, but I think you got Ben, now you got to do it. You got to do it. I'm going to move this All right, over. Here, here, we go. Go. Uh -oh. here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Wait, wait, wait. Kids next door battle station! <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> and he didn't have to scream that at all. No. Oh, no. Every time it was like that. That's you, man. Oh, God. Well, first of all, nice to meet you guys. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry. You okay? I'm sorry, Take a minute, Joe. <laughs> Back of the lot. No, I'm Back just kidding. Yeah. Just <laughs> um... Have there been any times where, because of like all the screaming or like um, just any of those moments where you get to laughing, where screaming. you had to do like several retakes? Um, no. No. It's no. No. <laughs> no. 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 Retakes? No. What? What? No. 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 These people are professionals. We They're don't like, do they retakes. They are the JVs. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Great. Yeah. One take. That's all. They, they got everything in one take. No. Every time. No. There's, yeah. There's retakes. There's plenty of those. Yeah. yeah. Of course. It's, it's acting. Yeah. You always have to do a retake. Yeah. Next question. Um, hi. Hello. I, I also just wanted to say that five and two were some of my favorite characters. Uh -huh. I. I really relate to the nerd archetype as a little kid. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard to believe. And yeah. <laughs> I don't think anybody at an anime convention That's hard to believe. would ever she be. She's talking crazy. Crazy. Is you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Anyway, so I have two questions. Ooh. What was the best line of comedic gold that you found in the script? Oh, just Lord. in general. I think we already answered yeah, we, this question. Yeah, oh, we, sorry. Yeah. That's okay. That's sorry. okay. All right. And the second question I wanted to ask was, how do you think Codename Kids Next Door got away with being Codename Kids Next Door at the time in, in which it was released? It was really in, innovative and new for its time, and I wanted to ask. I mean, I think that's how it got away with it, by just being a new, you know, a new idea. Mm -hmm. A fresh idea is always, uh, always arrives at the right time. You know, we always want something new, and that's why Kids Next Door struck such, such a chord, and why it's still reverberating today, I and, think. And not only that, you know, this started as a, a, a a contest of different, uh, I think, ten different pilots. Yeah. And so it was really, it was up to you know the viewers to decide who, which one they who wanted. they wanted, and they wanted K and D. Baby. So they were just like, well, geez, as many people want it, let's make it. Yeah. 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 Didn't matter if it was different. But thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, hello. Hello Hi. again. Hi again. Hi. <laughs> Samantha, right? Yes, Samantha. Holy smoke! Can you believe this? Yeah. Yeah. Come on, people. Oh, God. <laughs> Come on. The, I, well, I can't even remember my phone number. <laughs> I'm like, what up, Samantha? Okay. I'd like to know, other than the battle-ready armor, what is your favorite two-by-four technology they made? Oh, oh. Samantha, get out of here. Wow. Splanker for me. I like back it. on the land, back on the land. Hilarious. Splanker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing. Okay. Yeah. That thing. Me too. Yeah, me we too. like that one. We love that. 
I don't even know what that is. So. Splinker. Right. It's 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 dirty. All right, Miss Cree. Actually, let me. It's Miss Cree. Yes. All right. Um, my most memorable um episode in KND was the one of the fourth flavor. It had this entire oh right Indiana Jones esque thing, and she was just on a mission. To find the fourth flavor. <laughs> At the very end, she says, this tastes just like, and then stops. Yeah. If, if what once, did it taste like? Yeah. If, if, if did you, either did I you I don't want to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> well, then what would you want Just it to like be? chicken. <laughs> <laughs> nice save. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You. thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Uh, nice. She stole my two by four question. Okay, oh, thank so, God. <laughs> small favors, y'all. Small favors. Um, okay, so another question on the fly, I guess. If you, the both of you personally, had to pick a number to be entered into the kids next door, mm -hmm. what would it be? Like a number that didn't exist like, already? Like, like an, yeah, like number T. Like if you were inducted into the kids next door, what would be oh, the number geez. that you would choose? I'm stupid, so I would probably pick my social security number. Yeah. <laughs> and then just have my entire identity I mean, and I'd pick day. a number that already exists. It's so common, but I was born on the seventh day of the seventh month, so I would probably choose number seven. Nice. Because cool. no. <laughs> I'm, I'm a super seven. <laughs> Thank you. That's right, we're number 77. But I ain't that quick. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Hi. Hi. If you can design a weapon by designing a rainbow monkey, what would it look like and what would the weapon be? If we could design a rainbow monkey? Yeah. When and then we design its weapon? It's going to be a weapon. A rainbow, the rainbow monkey. A rainbow monkey. The rainbow monkey, monkey would, weapon. A rainbow monkey. Oh God. I would. Turn I have it. got to do more drugs. To, I mean. I, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm thinking something that like shoots a rainbow. And then I'll answer that. No, right. right out of its butt. Uh, rainbow. If yeah. I need to design a monkey, mm -hmm. let me get this straight. <laughs> yeah, design the monkey. <laughs> I need to design a monkey, and then I need to turn it into a weapon. Oh, chill. <laughs> Listen, it would be something that loaded my bong uh, without, <laughs> without spilling anything on the carpet. No, I don't know. I don't know. That's so far out. <gasps> Go ahead. Huh? Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm going uh, to make a, a giant stuffed rainbow monkey. It looks really innocent, but then you pull back its tail and, like, lightning bolt shoots out of its butt. Oh, my God. Look at, see, that oh, Ben has too much free time. Because <laughs> he got that way too fast. Right. I've been thinking okay. about that for years. Thank know. you. Thank, <laughs> thank right. you. Ben, ben has been thank thinking. He's, so been, yeah, he's been waiting for somebody to ask him that question. Yes. Oh, thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi. I remember you. Yeah. God, my memory. It's amazing. Yeah, it's coming back. <laughs> it's, all, yeah, it's all coming too many back. Times already this weekend. Yeah. Um, so my question is, what is the most interesting? <laughs> I'm like, what is the most interesting thing that happened during your recording sessions? Most interesting thing. Oh, I mean, I think the most interesting things probably happened in between takes. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, you can we, answer that too. I mean, I don't know. I mean, every now and then you'd have like great guest stars that would come. Oh, that's in, true. And yeah. just and just being together. I mean, I. I, I don't know if it's necessarily funny, but the most interesting part is just, you know, when you do a show for such a long period of time, you grow relationships, you become really good friends, you um, just deepen these connections with people. And that's, you know, really another favorite thing about doing animation to me is being surrounded by so many big talents and just so many kind, decent human beings. I think... Something about not being seen. It's, it's a different kind of celebrity. It's, it's just so anonymous in so many ways. And I think it just breeds kind people. I don't know how else With to it. this show in particular, because it, it borderlines on the absurd. Is there ever any time where you all looked at the script and you're like, this is just dumb? Oh, no. <laughs> because I think we're wired different. Yeah. I think when you do cartoons, it's really, it's, it takes a lot to shock us. I mean, we've played some all kinds of things. You know. She was foxy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I had a tail. Yeah. Steromotisms. Yeah. <laughs> do you do you want together? a microphone, sweetheart? <laughs> <laughs> you just. She doesn't even have to look up. Right. She. Right. Yeah. 
Right. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you guys. Um, you both have been amazing. A huge part of my childhood. You know, it's great. You know, thank you, man. Thanks so much, man. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm curious. Was it ever addressed in production or in the actual show the irony of a show for kids made by adults fighting about kids fighting adults? No, uh, I don't think no. so. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think it ever was. No, I don't think so. But thank you for That's shedding kind of light point, on it now. But yeah, yeah. No, I never even thought about that. It's being addressed today. All right, cool. <laughs> yes. That's all I want. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hello. Hi. Yo. Um, half my question was already asked, but um, if you could go back and join the Kinsex store, uh, what would you do? Like, would you do you... anything? Uh -huh. Yeah. Like, would you work on the moon base or in the, one of the? I'd bring there? it back. I'd just bring it back. I think it's such a kick-ass show. If mm. I could do anything, I'd. Bring, bring back K and D. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, definitely. I think um, if I would, were to go back and be a kids next door agent, uh, I would probably. Oh, I know. I would build stuff out of two by fours. <laughs> I am so He'd get it together. Handy, right. you guys. You don't even know. I get tetanus for everybody. That word. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> next question. Uh, I have two questions, if that's all right. That's, that's fine. fine. Uh, first one is, uh, how different was recording for stuff like video games or promos than the actual show for Kids Next Door, specifically? You mean Kids Next Door video games or Kids Next Door promos? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and the only, I mean, the video games, the difference is that it just takes a long-ass time. Mm. There's just a lot of lines. Video game scripts are very intimidating. Yeah. Uh, and promos are nice and short. So I guess it's just a matter of time, how much time they took. But it's all the same. I mean, if you're playing the same character, it better be the same. Yeah. Yeah, same thing here. I mean, um, the, the video game, I think, was really just sort of like a longer version of the show. Um, so we really didn't do anything too differently for it. And the promos were, were, were just sort of like, next on Cartoon Network. It's, it's just be energetic and do the yeah. voice. So, yeah. It's all the same. Promos, a.k.a. treat to your bank account. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's inside. What's the second question? <laughs> <laughs> the second question was, uh, how often is it that you uh, meet up with a voice actor or a showrunner that you've uh, already worked with previously and, you're like, and y you get all uh, familiar with them again? Every day. Yep. Every day. Because what people don't, uh, may not know is that the voiceover community is really tiny. Mm -hmm. It's just a small handful of people voicing your favorite cartoons, and we see each other every day. Yeah. You know, you show up for a new show, and it's the people who were in the show you just left. <laughs> First day of work, you're like, I just saw you five minutes ago, Ben. Hey, nice to see you again. Let's have a great new show. Yeah. I mean, it's just very familial, um, very safe, and it's an aspect. It's, it's always a shock when you see someone new come along. Kinda, it's like, yeah. who's this guy? Yeah, and um, then that guy's new, and you're like, oh, cool. And then you never see him again. And then you never see him again. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly enough, you never see him again. But, um, yeah, we it's, a, it's a small... <laughs> we do, don't we? want to keep it small. Right. We have exclusive <sighs> membership. Um, but, yeah, you see him all the time. Thank you. Thanks yeah. a lot. Uh, what? How is that 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 came about? The 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 love and and camaraderie within the voiceover community because it, you know acting communities at large are very cutthroat. Yes, uh, it is. Did you all decide? Yeah, we had a meeting. Yeah, we yes, together yeah. said, let's be nice. No, I think it's because you're not. I do really believe. I mean, ha having been someone who's been spent, you know. A, a, a large portion of my career on camera and also simultaneously a large portion of my career doing voiceovers, the difference is, is huge. I mean, it is very cutthroat on camera. Whereas with voiceovers, you know, I know you can attest to this, like Tara Strong will call me or Grey Delisle or one of my girls will call me and say, girl, I just did this audition. I'm so wrong for it, but I told them to call you. You know, they're going to call you any minute. There's a generosity in voiceover. There is not a sense of competition. There is uh, real friendships. So I think, you know, the, if the question is why is that, I think it's because we're not very popular well, as, as, you know, as individuals. Like, it's not like we walk down the street and you get mobbed because you do a voice for kids next door. That's true. You know what I mean? And I think maybe extracting some of that fame or whatever that aspect is i think maybe it i don't know maybe that's a component yeah. i feel like um because you know you don't see us we can play so many different types of characters like for yeah. on camera i am specifically my type is i'm like, the white girl's best friend that's it that's, that's yeah. it 
I'm nerd on a soap opera. No. That's all I can play. But I could be the white girl in a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, yeah. He could be the leading man. That's right. You so know, we, I could be the white boy. I could be an inanimate object. Exactly. I could be this. And because of that, we can, you know, you know, we get so many opportunities that we never feel like, this is the one job. If I don't yeah. book this, <laughs> no, you're going to ruin right. me. So we don't have that. That's right. So, there. Yeah. The desperation is It's just, it's taken out so much it. more laid back. And so people are just like, oh point. man, I, I got some friends you should probably listen to. Like, I recommend people for stuff all, all the, the time. time. All the and time. it's like, everybody does it. So everybody becomes becomes friends they're all we're all trying to help each other essentially yeah it's yeah. a rare thing in the entertainment industry I mm -hmm. feel like we have the same kind of camaraderie that that crew members have on films you know yeah. you get with a, a, the crew on a film and they're just the most beautiful people and voiceover community not yeah. uh, not voiceover industry yeah it's, voiceover community for yeah. sure next uh, hi uh, I love I like the show. All oh, you guys were great. Uh, love but the characters. No. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Isn't that how it sounded? But why right. is yeah. so yeah. bad. It's coming. Yeah. Uh, but my question is, uh, during the whole series, what was the most funniest and greatest scene out of all the episodes that you've done oh, for for voice acting? For voice acting, not yeah. for Kids Next Door. No, for for kids for kids next door. Uh, what was the most funniest. funniest scene that you guys have ever done? Boy, I mean, I know what made me laugh was um, little Suki's uh, rainbow monkey <laughs> oh. hallucination of her. Do you remember when she was like, oh. just like overwhelmed with those things and singing and dancing oh, about yeah. her? What was this rainbow monkey thing she had? Do you remember? She, I, like all her rainbow monkey dreams came true? Yeah. I can't remember. <laughs> I can't like remember the episode, Island. but I just remember thinking that was hilarious. Yeah. I saw that episode at home and I found that to be hilarious. But I don't know. I mean, I wasn't in it. <laughs> that was just telling. That was the funniest part to me. I like, I just, I mean, yeah. I, I, I have no, I have no good yeah. answer. Like, yeah, this show, yeah. man. This show, bro. This yeah. show. <laughs> So, anyway, so, <laughs> well, so you guys said that you guys record uh, for the most part recorded as an ensemble. Uh, were there? Uh, I'm sure there were uh, instances where one person got the giggles and it just went. Oh, just we got, got the giggles all the time. Yeah. I mean, that's a given because yeah. also sometimes things are taken out of context. You see something written on a page that's just by itself is hilarious or obs usually obscene because we're all nasty as hell. But oh yeah. Um, <laughs> Listen, if the younger the audience yeah. of the show, like if it's the more crass the cast probably Woo. is. Yeah. Woo. Oh my God. So aren't you glad we're raising your children? <laughs> 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 all right. Oh, That's all I got, oh, Mom. I'm so question. sorry. Yeah. Just thought we'd crush your dreams up here. Okay. <laughs> Off to cry on your pillow. All right, this is more of a question for number one, just for old time's sake. Yes, sir. Can you repeat the five words that you put into the book of KND? Oh, God. Oh, wow. <laughs> we are kids next door. Woo! Yeah! 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 Hey, my name is DJ Shellshock, and I'm currently with KSU Our Radio, Georgia's number one online college radio station. I just have hey. two questions for you guys. <laughs> Thank you. You talk fast. Yeah, you I do. Know, I do. I because he's a DJ, yeah, that was great, yeah. That was amazing, it was like a, yeah. Thank you, okay. you should hire me. Anyways, my second question. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the first question should be, will you hire me? Because yeah. that was right. hey, I have three hey. questions, I'm hey. sorry. Now, uh, my first question is, do you guys ever think in the voices that you played as? Think in those voices? No. I mean, maybe um, while, while we're working, yes. Mm. While, while we're working, I think in the voice, yes. Yeah. Yes, 100%. All right, and my second question is, do you guys ever accidentally speak in the voices that you play as out loud? All the time. Yep. That is, a, that is an ongoing problem. That is an ongoing problem. Yeah. yeah. Is that something that we you have? We think we're hilarious. My daughters are like, please stop, stop. it. Stop. <laughs> stop it, mama. Does that happen? We but hate your that voice. Yeah, your kids are like, just be normal. Yeah, What's they're that? not impressed. Yeah. <laughs> is that for specific voices or just all of them in general? A lot bad. of it, just a lot of them. I mean, it depends on the situation, yeah. you know. Maybe making a smart-ass comment, it'll come out like a character. <laughs> and we never make those. <laughs> no. no. Well, thank you so much. I listen to KSU Al Radio. <laughs> <laughs> you better get that plug in. There you go. All right, for my question, there was a, remember the one time when you guys were actually playing the anti-kids next door? 
how did it feel like playing those characters when you're actually reversed? Did it feel kind of weird because you're actually now Nigel was um, very passive and number five was, can't, I, can't, I kind of don't want to say like that goofy. One, number five was just a little way too weird when she went anti. Yeah, she's way too weird. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember how it felt. <laughs> um, I'm sure it was kind of fun. It's always fun to vary a character. Yeah. So as an actor, it's always fun to, you know, if you've been playing a, a character for a couple of years and then you get an opportunity to switch it up, it's always fun. Mm, yeah, for me, number, number one, as like the more kind of like Frady Cat guy, that was much easier on me because I had to learn on this job how to sound authoritative and commanding because that's not the kind of guy I am. No, like, man. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> She intimidates me. <laughs> so scared. Um, and uh, but no, but like getting to do that, I was like, oh, okay, I can I can finally like play the guy who's like just doesn't know what the hell he's doing uh, in a room surrounded by real professionals. So uh, it was like, oh, okay, it's, it, it mirrors real life. So it was great. <laughs> Cute. And the second question was, um, what did you guys feel like was the biggest twist through the story? Hmm, um, uh, <laughs> um, you know, it, it might you guys stop being so damn smart? Right. <laughs> it might have been the ending for me. I mean, because like yeah. when it's revealed that like there are there's like a galactic kids next door, and yeah. then, like there are aliens on like like I forget which that one of them was. That was a shocker. Yeah, it was like number infinity. I think was turned out. He's like, yeah, I'm from Galactic Kids Next Door. We need your help in outer space. Yeah, that and was like, freaky. What the? <laughs> yeah, that was freaky. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> All right, I already went, so I'll make this quick. Um, I was wondering if I could uh, get a birthday shout-out for um, my boyfriend, who's, um, it's on Saturday. Uh -huh. And you're um, number five and number one voices. Okay. What's, what's, what's his name? Uh, his name's Mike. Hold Mike. on. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, okay. I'll whip it yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh, my. we're in public, good sir. All right. You ready? Wait, 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 yeah. What's his yeah. name again? Mike. <laughs> I can remember Mike. everybody's yeah. name. Oh, I can remember that. everybody's right. name ever walked up to right. me and now like, oh, what's his name again? Mike. Mike. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Hello, Mike. Happy birthday from number one of Kids Next Door. Hey, baby. This is number five of Kids Next Door. Happy birthday, Mike. Yeah, Mike. Woo! Better stations. Uh. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sure. <laughs> All right. Um, yesterday, I was at the Kill the Kill panel. So I have a question regarding to something you said about, especially for you, Ben. Yes. Oh, God. What was the most funniest blooper that happened on KND? On KND? Yes. Oh, OK. All right. Oh, also, I got to say that again, huh? Yeah. yeah. No, OK. All right. <laughs> I, was, so, I, was, I was like, can you elaborate more? I think I, I, think okay. I know what you're talking about. Sure. OK. So. Um, there's a child in the front row. Yeah, I know. I saw her. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Earmuffs. Yeah. Earmuffs, yeah. Mama. Earmuffs. Uh, earmuffs. Uh, I don't think there's any swear words in there. Her so mom, no, her mom says it's fine, so oh. go for oh, it. Oh, good. All right. Yeah. Hey, don't Do worry it. about I know. it. She won't, she won't remember this. <laughs> right. She, uh, yeah, she's young enough to just gloss right so, over this. Nice. This was during the Christmas episode. Of course. Um, and uh, yeah. Tom Kenny is playing Santa Claus. So... I love Tom Kenny. Yes, he is, we love he is, Tommy. He is the best. Yeah. And he says some horrible things and it makes us all laugh. And so um, he's supposed to say uh, number three and number four, they're having like kind of a, a fight, like lover's tiff a little bit. And um, he says, he's supposed to say, hey, take it under the mistletoe, you two. And instead he says, hey, take her under the mistletoe. <laughs> And so then it became like, oh yeah, take her out of the. And so everybody started going in on this, and like the the you know we're in two separate rooms. There's uh, the the control room where the director and engineer and all that stuff are. They're separate from us, and our mics are off at the time. And uh, all they see is us going like, and then pointing at Tom Kenny going. <laughs> was him and they came on the button like what what did he say what did he say and they said we said they'd say it again tom and he's like yo yes yes take her under the mistletoe let santa watch oh oh santa's eggnog is really starting to flow and we're like that was that was him can't we get did clean. not go there can't get clean yeah can't get clean that was probably the worst one the are you shower. happy can't get clean <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. I have, oh, sorry. I have two oh. questions. Wait, wait, we're going to wait, wait, wait. kick it over him first. Okay. Or, oh, I'm okay. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm did. The microphone. Sorry. Go. Talk. Question. You're good. Okay. Oh. Um, well, I have two questions, but first one for Ben. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite joke that number two said? <laughs> he 
He don't know, child. <laughs> um, <laughs> you tell us. I don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> what was, yes. What was your favorite number what was your two favorite joke? joke? Yeah. Uh, You're so yeah. Scary. Come on. I think one of my favorite ones was, pro- or rather, I can't remember one of my jokes, but one of my favorite number two lines. <laughs> Five feet two in. <laughs> there you go. Nice. Nice. Any any, any pun? Well, They're all well beautiful. Well I, I, I love that. One. But before I go, I just want to say I shared number two and number five so much. Thank Aww, you. Thank you. So cute. We, we made it together, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> um, I just want to say first of all, coding can. K and D, because I can't talk. Um, K and D um, was one of my best childhood memories. It was up there with Totally Spies and Kolioko. So, <laughs> yeah. anybody remember the block Maguzi when Kolioko came out? Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's only me. But um, I just wanted to ask: um, Could you each notice the progression of the Candy um, characters, especially when Nigel, especially when he started having a crush on Cree, and then he started wanting to become a little teenager, and then you kind of notice after that a little bit, like the progression, and they started to become... He handle all this. <laughs> <laughs> um, and started to become into their own, because I know they started to get like a little bit of their own episodes and started to deal with like their own problems as kids. And I mean, mm-hmm. I don't think everyone, everyone understood like p- kids had problems too. We had really big issues. You know, recess, we can get playtime. Sometimes we can get nap time. Yes, girl, politics. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, just to... I mean, I think I really started to notice the progression when Abby started dealing with her older sister, Cree, mm. and just that relationship of, you know, Abigail being so tough and so self-assured as a member of the K&D, but then, you know, when you just, at, or you're at home and you got a big sister and you got the baby sister blues and just all that that entails and trying to live up to somebody else or, or being disillusioned by your big sister, I thought was a big, nice, cool kind of arc for mm. her because I'm sure, you know, as a baby sister, you look up to your big sister and then to have her be such an asshole, you know. <laughs> um, I just, I, that, I remember that was one of my favorite ev- evolutions of Abigail. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like, I'm going to give way more of like a technical answer because I'm not good with emotions. Um, <laughs> it's okay. I, I think like um, for the first like 13 episodes, which was like our season one, that was sort of the establishing season of like, okay, here's what the show is going to be about. And then when it was like, we're going to do more than that, that was kind of like the, the opportunity of like, oh, let's expand on the characters. Let's, actually, let's give them like real dimension to them so that they, we feel like we're learning more about them as they, as they go. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and you know, a big part of the show is just kind of growing up. So, like, yeah. you know, when number two starts, like, he t- gets turned into a teen, and he's like, oh, wow, I really like Cree. Cree. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I remember that. I mean, for me, it was, you know, oh, wow, Sailor Jupiter. <laughs> but, you know, to each their own. I love you, Ben. I oh, really thanks, do. Thank Thank you. Sailor <laughs> Jupiter. This guy. What's up, Goku? How <laughs> hey, you doing, man? I got two questions on um, the first one is, what was the most hilarious thing D. Bradley Baker did in the recording booth with oh, you guys? Mm. I don't know about hilarious, but I will say, I will say this. D is, I, I get asked a question by like, um, people who are not, they don't know anything about the animation industry, and they say, um, aren't you impressed by Seth MacFarlane? Is he your hero? Yeah. <laughs> because he does, he does a bunch of different voices. And I'm like, well, I say, like, oh, he's great. But what impresses the heck out of me is D, is D doing creature stuff? Yes. Holy cow! There is yeah. nobody's. I mean, I I had to tweet about D one day. We do a show together called Dawn of the Crudes, and um, D does all of the creatures, all these you know fictitious kind of mashups of these. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? These uh, dinos. Yeah, dinosaurs. Prehistoric animals, exactly. Thank you, girl. We'd giveth and we'd taketh away. Um, uh, some things I've lost. <laughs> that word definitely lost. Um, but, you know, watching D, I, I videotape him all the time at work, just for my own pleasure, because he blows my mind. You can just give him an image of what is that Tyrannosaurus Rex crossed with a Chihuahua, crossed with a 
pigeon, what does that sound like? And this guy will pull it out like that, and it does sound like all three animals. So it's, I mean, yes, D makes me laugh all the time just as a person, but more than anything, he impresses the shit out of us. Yeah, oh my God. There was, do you guys remember the episode where the beds come to life and they carry the kids away yeah. at night? So D. the director was like, okay, we want a bed, <laughs> and it's also going to be part bull, so I want to hear part bull, part inanimate object. Yeah. And so he pulls something out, and it's like, sure, no right. problem. Yeah, no and, problem. and they're like, yeah, that's great. Can you make it sound a little more mahogany? And they were just joking. <laughs> <laughs> he changed it a little bit. And, and they he were added like, that He shit. added the mahogany. Yeah, and they were does. like, wow. Yeah, that's, I, that's great. Thank sorry. you. I'm so sorry. like, yeah. He's the man. Yeah, D. And my second question is for Ben. Yes. How did you feel about the episode where n number one lost his uh, bathing suit? <laughs> I was like, but isn't that big? <laughs> I thought that was so like, cute. Come on, he's right next to Hoagie. Yeah. Hoagie's waist, but it's, it's got to be bigger than Nigel's. <laughs> Where does he keep it all? Come on. Where does he keep it all? Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank welcome. you. Hi. Um, I've had a lot of time to think about a question. Um, well, when I started watching Kids Next Door, it was just like, it wasn't fantasy but it was in a real life setting and then all this wild stuff started happening. It's like, yeah, bring your kids to work day so we can send them to another planet. Or, you know, like um, Arctic base, moon base. And so I wanted to ask, like, what was your favorite sort of design choice in the show? Like mm -hmm. something or a weapon or something that's just like, wow, how does someone come up with that? I just loved our treehouse. I mean, I just mm. loved, I just loved, you know, home base. I mean, that was the, the coolest thing. I thought everybody had their little section that you came out from. And I, I mean, that yeah. was the hippest thing to me. And it was all like modeled after their personalities. That's like, right. D sleeps in a boxing ring. Yeah. It was like, like, yeah. I, I liked moon base. I, I always thought like, it was like, oh man, I always wanted to go to space and be an astronaut. And it's like, the kids live there. I'm like, that's cool. They play in zero G and stuff. I'm like, that's. Yeah. I'm going to say moon base. Bam. Okay, thank you. I'll thank say you. home base. Bam. Uh -uh. Hey. Um, hey, man. <laughs> Hi. Um, my name Hi. is Michael McPherson. Hey, uh, Michael. Yeah, we're, we're talking oh, like this because we think your voice is really I know you're like yeah. hey. serving yeah. Billy D. Realness. Damn. Hey. What's happening, Michael? Oh, 45. Yeah. How's it going? Yeah, yeah. Must go like but, this. Um, Welcome really. to the quiet story, the reason, yeah. Michael. I get it. I get we're going to be playing love songs all night long. You got it. <laughs> Smooth jazz. Smooth jazz. Jam. Coming up, we got some hey. oldies from Keith Sweat and the Stylistics. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The but, um, sounds of sexy soul. <laughs> Come on, man. No, my brother, We're you got to get let your you own. Ask this question. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah. 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 You guys have yeah. been an inspiration for me. Um, mm -hmm. Cree, you, play, you played uh, Freddy on Different World. That was like an amazing mm -hmm. role. Yeah. Bang, 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 bang. Ben, I didn't realize this till just now, but you play Eugene on Hey Arnold. I, I was the third yes. Eugene, yes. Hey <laughs> Arnold, like my favorite show <laughs> I ever. I was the so. third, third Eugene. Eugene. All right. um, I have like three questions, I think. Uh -oh. Yeah. All right. What's the most brutal scene either of you have oh, had geez. to do, either on this show or just in ever in your, vo your voice acting career? Um, for me, physically at least, the most brutal scene um, was, I don't know if I can call it a scene, but it would have been an episode of a show called Spectacular Spider-Man. Right. Um, all right. Uh, I played Eddie Brock and Venom in it, and uh, what they needed was a voice track of the symbiote, which sounds like this! And then on top of that, dubbing to myself as my normal speaking voice sounding a little bit hypnotized. And we had to do the lines over and over and over again. It was just me in the room for about five hours. Oof. I, I, I got messed up for about a week from that. Yeah. yeah. But it was worth it. It sounded good. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> good job, Bruce. Are you waiting for my answer? <laughs> <laughs> if you have oh, one. Chris, like, I'm a professional. I, I don't get time. I do time. get, I mean, I just, I, uh, I did a character named Wuya on uh, Shaolin, Shaolin Chronicles. Shaolin. <laughs> And that character used to wear me out after a while. You know what I mean? Just that whisper and that talking like this. It just event that that gets to be a lot after a while. Cool. Yeah, Miss uh, Woo Ya Chow. Cree, do you prefer voice acting work over you know stage acting and show acting? 
I don't think I have a preference one over the other. I love them both. But what I do appreciate about voiceover acting is I am not, uh, I'm not forced to just be what I look like. I can be anything. I don't just have to be female. I don't just have to, I don't have to weigh a certain amount. I don't have to be pretty. Uh, it, it really is just based on what I sound like and how creative I can be. And I also, another thing that I think a lot of people don't realize about voiceovers is that we really are encouraged oftentimes to veer from the script, which is something that doesn't happen that often in live action. We, you know, once you get a handle on a character, they'll say, go ahead and riff on it a little bit. You know, play around. And if you say something that brings down the house, they'll let you keep it in the script. And so I, I, I love the freedom that uh, voice acting affords me. But I love them both. I, I, I couldn't pick one over the other. I, I love music too, so. All right. And is, has there ever been a character where you just didn't agree with, like you were just like, oh, I can't believe I have to do this character? No. No. No, we, we, we have no integrity. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. Thank no. you. <laughs> no, thank you. Bye, Mike. See thank you later. so much. Oh, yeah. yeah, baby. Walk that walk. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. Yep. Um, Cree. Yes. I, we think that you're pretty. And we all know that you're so much more than that. Sweet, uh, sweet thing. <laughs> I'll give you a $20 after on the side. <laughs> uh, my question is, uh, in, uh, actually, w uh, one of two questions. What projects are you currently working on that okay. we can look forward to seeing you, okay. uh, both of you on? I gotta look this shit up because I can't, I can never, <laughs> I can never, no, I made a list, I made a list. I just can never uh, remember, that's all. Uh, Look, Jesus, you go first. Oh, yeah. You go first. You go first. Um, well, here's the thing. So, in our line of work, we sign a bunch of things called non disclosure agreements. Well, you can talk about some of them. Talk about what you're doing right now. Or say what it rhymes with, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, no, um, boy. Oh, gosh. Things that are out right now. Yeah, just do that. Oh, okay. Um, uh, coming up soon is Kingdom Hearts 2.8. It's going to be the uh, uh, PS4 version of Dream Drop Distance. Uh, I'm Young Master Zayn Ort in that. Um, uh, boy. I'm not good at this. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. You want me to take over Please, okay. hey, save me. I know, I know. I just saw a, cart, a commercial for it, and I can't remember the name, but Blizzard has this game where all the characters come back and battle each other. Overwatch. What's it called? Overwatch. Yeah, I'm Overwatch. doing that. I'm in that as R.A.L. Nice. Um, I'm also playing Hagar in the new Voltron. Yeah. Uh, which is so kick-ass on Netflix. I'm also doing uh, Aga and Dawn of the Croods, Nebula in Guardians of the Galaxy. Yep. Yeah. Ace and Dino Trucks. Uh, Mama and Rolling with the Ronk. Celindus and Starcraft. Rollerball Brawl and Skylanders. Miss, Mrs. Furful and Breadwinners. BD in Tom and Jerry. Denzel and Grandmo and Henry Huggle Monster. I just did uh, doing a guest spot on Pin Zero, and I just did a guest spot on Powerpuff Girls. Ooh, wow. All right, ladies and that gentlemen, we have time for one <laughs> more question. I gotta write it down. My oh. alt <laughs> now. Oh. Yeah, sorry. Oh. Uh, look at them walking away. We hate kids next door. This, this better be a great <laughs> question. Okay. Kids next door. I have a question for Ben. Yes. Um, recent, up until recently, I didn't realize that you did a lot of voice acting in a lot of various animes and cartoons. Mm -hmm. You actually did a voice acting for my favorite character in Seven, one of my favorite characters in Seven Deadly Sins. His name is Bond. Yeah. Can you please explain to me what was that like for you? What was Bond like? Wow. Uh, we're talking about what was doing his voice like for you. Oh man, it was really great. You know, it started, it started off kind of almost like my natural speaking voice, but I kept kind of trying to pull it down here because I just like doing this. <laughs> And yeah, I mean, you know, you know, it's really, it's, it's fun to go into um, an anime recording session and go, yeah, I'm just going to play the guy who just talks really chill, you know, as opposed to, This you know. is what you normally so, have to do. Yeah, so no, Bon is just, he's a really chill guy, and uh, my favorite part about him by far is the fact that every time he ruins that shirt, he somehow finds somebody else wearing the exact same damn and shirt. I, and I really love how rude he is to Hawk. <laughs> he's mean to Hawk. He's mean to, but he's he's, he's got a good soul. <laughs> for and, and for Cree, I really love your spirit. Thank you. Yeah. 
She smells amazing. Oh I'm just here God. to tell you. She smells. She's, <laughs> I'm she, gonna owe everybody she, so much she, money. She smells like juniper berries and cinnamon and freedom. Like, <laughs> and freedom. like if, freedom. let me tell you something. If you, could, if you could bottle like Obama's third term, that's what it smells like. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> but, oh, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, we have come to the end of our panel. Uh, give it up one more time for Ben. Hey, Dick thank you, beautiful people. God bless the freaks. Heck yeah. Thank you.